Well, I look forward to jumping in here. So let's see who comes out on top between Johnny Manuel Dupra on Monoid Agro versus Andre Strasky, Rock and Celti Control. Take a look at these opening hands. Hello, removal. Skyclave apparition <laughs> times three. Johnny Manuel doesn't look pleased, though. Explain that face, please, Corey. Well, because Skyclave apparition is really not that strong here. Uh, Andre Strosky doesn't put that many permanents into play, except like Omen of the Sea, which is a fine target to take because it stops the the high impact of Yorian. Um, but otherwise it's like taking binding the old gods and then you're getting a four, four if you were to kill that and stuff. So I, I like the mulligan there. Skyclave is not very good in this matchup. Yeah, a much better looking hand there. A mulligan as well from Andre Strasky. Going to send back Seagate Restoration and keep a hand of three lands as well as a mystical dispute. Valky, cheeky little thing, and okay. the emergent ultimatum. Yeah, uh, yuck from Andre Strasky as well. That's not a, that's not really the best hand either. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we're we're probably pretty likely to see the Velky mode here instead of Tybalt. Um, but what Andre is really hoping for, and he's channeling all his energy, saying, "Give me a cultivate, give me a cultivate, give me a cultivate." <laughs> <laughs> Scry has left a Dark Ball pathway on top, so we know what his draw is going to be. Mm -hmm. Snowland down for Jean Manuel Duprat. No one drop, unfortunately. Would love to find either the Owl Seed or the good old puppy dog to keep the next threats protected. But nothing that those two can do from Valky, God of Lies, who comes down as a creature and is going to take a squiz in the hand here of Jean Manuel yeah. Duprat and take one of these threats. Now, if you were Valky, what would you choose? I think I would hit Season Hollow Blade um, just because that card is actually really hard for Soul Tide to deal with outside of the Shadows Verdict, which, you know, comes down on turn five. So it's mm -hmm. really tricky to deal with. And with having a Mystical Dispute from Strosky, he's able to counter that Skyclave Apparition um, here next turn. Um, that would take care of Velky and get Season Hollow Blade back. So... Luminarch Aspirin is good and it will add up and it becomes quite tough to Heartless Act here after this first turn. But <laughs> speaking <laughs> of the you devil, him. I totally you did. You jinxed him. But I like oh, that man. play. Season Hollow Blade is quite good in this matchup. Yeah, I like that too. So Valky's just going to hang out. We might see him transform into a Seasoned Hollow Blade if uh, Strasky wants to get on the offensive. But for now, I don't... Do, do, do we consider a trade here? Not having an answer to not having a way to deal with the season, or excuse me, with the Luminarch Aspirant at this moment? Um, I don't, I, I think maybe Strosky considers an attack here, but I don't think there's a chance Jean Emmanuel is going to block here. That, that Luminarch Aspirant, <laughs> this is the only turn where a trade would happen, but. Yeah, yeah. And from this point on, it's just going to, here come the snow puns, snowball out of control until <laughs> Andre Strosky can find. Uh, a way to deal with it. Yeah, and this mystical dispute uh, is going to be quite good here where normally that is just not a really strong card in the matchup. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the more unorthodox plays are are actually coming up for Strosky here, playing Valky and actually getting use out of mystical dispute. Ooh, here is a way to deal with Luminarch Aspirant, though, in Binding the Old Gods on time, on turn four. And yes. we'll get to ramping for Strasky as soon as chapter two hits. But first things first, let's get this Aspirant off the board. Yeah, no, that was the best possible draw, because that is, you know, a half cultivate as well as a removal spell for this Lumin Luminarch Aspirant where you just can't kill it with Heartless Axe and stuff. So that was the best possible draw for that turn. On the other side of the battlefield, John Emmanuel Dupra's draws have not been very kind to him. He has a giant killer, which isn't going to find any targets for chop down. He's probably just going to have to jump down into the way here of Velky eventually. Mm -hmm. But does have this Faceless Haven, this new addition from Keldheim, able to get in four points of damage and just pass the turn back. But attacking is going to be a little bit more tricky now that we've found the Cadillac. Oh, Cadillac coming down. Get some kitty cats to drive right in front of that Faceless Haven. Another excellent draw here. Um, Strosky now has the tools to buy himself some good time. And with John Emanuel just attacking with that 4-3 last turn, Strosky has to recognize that there's probably not that great of a hand um, um, from John Emanuel. Yep. On the plus side, though, Giant Killer all of a sudden is looking very, very pleased with himself. Seeing that there's a Cadillac coming on this way and could potentially take care of that as we're now going to see Essica's Chariot crewed with the two creatures. Yep. And uh, Strosky, you know, knows about these giant killers in the list. We do see the full four. So he's okay if this trade were to happen. Um, and, you know, being able to buying the old gods 
um, this as lead as well as just put Yorin into hand and Heartless Act something is great plays. So no matter what, Strosky's got a really nice turn here. Yeah. And we'll get into points of damage here with one of these death-touching kitty cats. And we'll take Johnny Manuel down to 12. Yep, and I want to remind everyone, Andre Strosky here is really at that uh, precipice of being fourth and fifth in the leaderboard. Andre Mangucci just passed him with that win last round, uh, where if the season ended... Uh, Andrea Mangucci would be in Worlds and Andre Strosky would be one spot out. So a big match here and every match is big moving forward for Andre. Yep. Plenty to play for. You want to lock up one of those top four slots oh, to yeah. get that spot in the World Championship. As we see Faceless Haven continuing its onslaught. Four more points of damage. Andre Strosky goes down to nine. Season Hello Blade. The follow-up play here for Johnny Manuel Dupra, not leaving anything in hand, dumping everything down on the battlefield, getting Giant Killer to work, and All finding right. the old god, Trigger 2. And there we go. That's land number seven. So right now, um, all we have to do, we put Yorian in hand and save that Heartless Act um, just in case that tricky god comes uh, into play that we can kill. Um, but otherwise, it's emergent ultimatum time from Strosky, and it's going to be devastating for John Emanuel. Yep. Not looking very good here at all for the mono-white aggro player. And uh, everything just coming out Strosky's way. This mono-white deck has mm -hmm. been typically favored to beat the Saltai ultimatum deck due to the lack of creatures. But you've got to yep. think that the, the, the check house have really hit the nail on the head here in terms of their deck construction, including something that creates creatures and just protecting mm -hmm. the, the life total until the point that they can fire off that ultimatum. Yeah, I think this deck is just really strong. Um, Sultai ultimatum, and it can be adjusted in so many different ways because not only are you playing 80 cards, but um, just Sultai colors in general have a lot of tools at their disposal. You can just add a ton of removal for these aggressive decks. Um, you do sacrifice a lot in other matchups like rogues and, and stuff like that. But if you anticipate a heavy aggressive metagame, you can beat that with Sultai if you try hard enough. To block seasoned Hello Blade discards the Sentinel's Eyes, and in response, we're going to see a Heartless Act from Andre Strasky to take care of this Faceless Haven once and for all, potentially, or does he have something else in mind? Yeah, interesting to hit Season Hollow Blade or the Faithless Haven. Um, yeah, decides to just take down Season Hollow Blade while we can. Nice. In for four, down to five goes Strasky, and Johnny Manuel really, really needs something now to keep himself in this matchup. As uh, next turn, ooh, it's ultimatum time. Yeah, we see it already being held up. There's no question. It doesn't matter what Strasky's drawing. We are casting Emergent Ultimatum. It is arguably the most powerful card in standard right now, um, just because of the. The combination of Ulrun's Epiphany and just all of these really powerful cards. I think mm -hmm. Ulrun's Epiphany was really what put this card over the edge. You know, it was a fine card in Standard before, but being able to always select a Time Walk-like effect just makes it so you almost get the other two cards every time. And if you're yeah. just paying seven mana to get two seven mana cards, that'll do it. And we don't yep. even need to see what they were. That's all she wrote. Yep, just an impossible situation there with the extra turn potential or the Vorenklex. Both would have led to lethal there. Or Andre Strasky, who picks up the first victory. So pretty convincing there for him. Yep, nice stuff there. Now we uh, go to the sideboard, and John Emanuel will get to be um, you know, on the play here. So that is a big advantage, and there's some draws from this mono white deck. If you can just curve one through three um, with, with some decent creatures, Season Hollow Blade or Luminarch Aspirin or something, it's really tough for these Sultai decks to deal with it. They got to kind of have that perfect draw of interact on turn two with something like Eliminate or Heartless Act, uh, Cultivate into, you know, some of your big spells like Shadow's Verdict or something. Um, so it really puts the pressure on these Sultai lists. Yeah, some interesting sideboard decisions there. Banishing Light coming in as well as Funeral Longboat. That's something I would, didn't think we'd see at uh, at the tournament this weekend or at the league weekend. As we get things underway here in game number two, Elder Gargaroth, the draw there for Andre Strasky after the Snow Plains comes on down. And uh, yep. two-season Hello Blades here for John Emanuel. 
we'll say a discounted uh, smuggler's copter right there um, being put <laughs> in the sideboard. Yeah, some really interesting cards from these mono white decks as far as sideboard choices. Um, you know, some cards you would not even play in limited. Just slap them right <laughs> into that uh, mono white aggro sideboard. Gotta respect that. <laughs> <laughs> In comes the season Hello Blade, drawing first blood down to 17, goes Andre Strasky. What will the follow-up be? Are we going to see a selfless savior come on down, or will we perhaps see Helvar's backside? The card, not his actual bottom. <laughs> but it is going to be selfless savior. He's going to get a little, uh, little bit of screen time here to protect his buddy. <laughs> Yeah, some great plays either way. Um, Season Hollow Blades here, just really, really tough to deal with. Um, and we don't actually see... Okay, I see one Extinction event as the card that uh, Andre really wants here mm -hmm. to be able to um, deal Ooh. with these creatures before turn five if we find Shadow's Verdict, which that was a excellent draw here. Um, so outside of that, John Emanuel knows that his creatures are pretty safe until turn five, yeah. unless Strosky draws that one of Extinction event. Well, he's going to be digging for it here, finds an Eliminate. That's not going to cut it with these indestructible creatures. So can he survive to turn five? That is the question with mm. already seven power on the battlefield here for Jean Emmanuel. Yeah, I like keeping the Eliminate here. Just if anything, um, casting Eliminate on your opponent's turn to tap down Season Hollow Blade kind of at least lets you gain three life. Um, mm hmm you know, ideally, or sacrifice that selfless savior. And then we're just hoping that there's not any big cards, any four drops or anything before you shadows verdict. Yeah. Eliminate's going to take care of the selfless savior. So no sacrifice there to keep one of these alive. No need to, as we're going to follow up now with Redain, God of the Worthy, mm -hmm. making every four CMC spell cost two more. That what is gonna hurt. Yeah, oh yeah. What a heads-up play from Strosky here. Leaving that Eliminate on top to deal with Redain. Otherwise, like, how on earth is Strosky going to deal with that card? We saw we see all the mana costs go up a little bit mm -hmm. in Strosky's hand. So being able to kill that and then Shadow's Verdict next turn is, is going to be quite strong. Um, yep. Now, John Emanuel does have some plays, two plays actually, that are really good against that line. And that is either just playing Helvar as a four drop because Shadow's Verdict cannot kill that, or just attack with Faithless Haven twice. And right now that's that's Strosky taking 10 this turn um, if he kills uh, Radon and then just cannot Shadow's Verdict because Faithless Haven cleans it up. So I think Strosky's in a lot of trouble here. We might have to turn yeah. to Elder Gargaroth instead. <laughs> Well, the Gagaroth is a pretty good uh, defense against this white deck, being able to draw cards, create extra blockers, and gain some life when it blocks or attacks. I don't think we're going to see much attacking, though, from it. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see what the follow-up will be from Strasky. Johnny Manuel just thinking about the options here. Like you mentioned, we could get Faceless Haven rocking, could commit more to the battlefield here in Halvar, mm -hmm. God of Battle, but we are all going to go for the Faceless Haven and get to swinging. And I think that locks it up. I, I think that locks it up here. The best Strosky can do is, you know, kill Faithless Haven as far as damage goes, um, but then is unable to cast Shadow's Verdict next turn to clean up the rest of the creatures. Mm -hmm. So I guess the be best thing to do is to kill, um, you know, kill the god, but then Shadow's Verdict only cleans up the Hollow Blades, and then Faithless Haven wins next turn as well. So I don't think there's a way out um, from this game, from Andre Strosky, no matter what he does. Mm -mm. Oh, could that change things? Can't cost it, though. With Redain on the battlefield, unfortunately, Essex's Chariot is a non-creature spell. Yep. And uh, I guess we can... Okay, actually, we can Gargaroth here. Block a Season Hollow Blade, gain three. Mm -hmm. and Go to one. Two. Um, now, that wouldn't work if John Emanuel draws a land to play the backside of Helvar to get in those extra points of ja of damage. But as it sits now, that is a play that keeps uh, Strosky alive. And if you can stay alive with Elder Gargaroth in play and get to attack, gain some more life and stuff, that's that's mm -hmm. excellent. So there is a line here, and I'm sure Strosky will see it as his only option here in a, in a little bit. 
Mr. Trasky now just going through every eventuality. Once we mm. get this pathway down, here comes Elder Gargaroth. It's going to be on blocking duty and life gain duty as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And th- John Emanuel and thankfully, sees he's like, that was the only card. <laughs> yeah, thankfully, Skyclave Apparition can't do anything about that. And just to add insult to injury, draws oh. the third one off the top of the library. That is not what JED needed. And you can see, hands on the head, he knows that that was not a good draw. Yeah, this just seems, this this draw step kind of just sums up how the MPL has been going for a select three players right now. Yeah. John Emanuel is one of the three players who did not pick up a win on day one. And you got to just expect whenever, from John Emanuel's perspective, whenever he wanted a land, it was a creature. Whenever he wanted a creature, it was a land. And sometimes magic is like that, where it's just a yeah. little bit frustrating from the top of the deck. So... Seeing that draw, does that change anything in terms of attacks? Clearly not, as we will still see a swing here for Jean Emmanuel. Yeah, I think you just still have to jam. You discard to save um, and just hope this is all enough. But with Gargaroth living here and being able to play the Cadillac next turn to get a good amount of blockers down, all of a sudden, I'm not going to say this is uh, now Strosky's game to lose, but... Now you gotta put pull that advantage bar just a little bit back here mm-hmm. uh, into reality. Skyclave Apparition is gonna join the attacking force on John Emanuel's board. Can only take the Omen of the Sea. And might not. Might, might not, yeah. Might, might take nothing just to not add a 2-2. Like, there's mm-hmm. the, the Yorian here, the value you get from Omen... It, there's only that one companion, Yorian, and, and it's not that big of a deal, but the 2-2 illusion that Skyclave get, uh, gives yeah. Andrei Strosky can be a liability there. So I'm actually kind of surprised to see taking the Omen. Because honestly, I think that unlocks Binding the Old Gods as a play as well. Like if you just kill Skyclave, um, then you get a 2-2, gain some life with this. I think we'll still probably just see Azika's Chariot, but it unlocks yep. that as an option because it is a removal spell and now a 2-2 illusion as well. Yeah. So Fable Passage cracked. We're going to go find a basic land from the library. Let's see what the play is going to be here for Strasky. Looks yeah, to be and- considering that Skyclave. <laughs> He even just kind of thought about that with his cursor there. He like pulled it towards the Skyclave. He's like, oh, that's an option, <laughs> but I think I will still go with the Cadillac. Mm-hmm. So Kitty Car down on the board along with two feline friends. Selfless Savior drawn off the top of the library. Yeah. How a- does Johnny Manuel get back into this? Is it possible? What a tilt from this point. You know, I mean, honestly, I think... Uh, what we need here pretty soon, if not next turn, is probably a giant killer if he didn't side them all out. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, wow, this just turned around. And if we get a land from Strosky, Shadow's Verdict for everything but Gargaroth, <laughs> I think I would uh, accept the terms and conditions on that card, that's for sure. Oh, that's going to be so painful. Here it comes, Shadow's Verdict without hesitation. Onto the stack it goes. Everything with three CMC or less goes bye-bye. And the verdict is in. That uh, will be game-breaking. And and get a couple of illusions here. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how fast that these Sultai ultimatum decks just turn it around. Usually it's just with the card Emergent Ultimatum, but Elder Gargaroth is still one heck of a magic card as well. And I I think this is it. Five mana, six, six, delivering the beat down. And John Manuel mm-hmm. Dupra is going to scoop him on up. Andre Strasky with the convincing 2-0 victory. That has to hurt, man, for John Emanuel. Got a feel for him.